it is a coming of age story of a villain and uh, trying to figure out her her journey and and who her true self is uh, along the way. Welcome to the Sarah Scoop channel. Please like and subscribe for more of the scoop. I, you know, I got a call from Sean Bailey and he said, uh, uh, what do you think about Emma Stone playing Cruella in 1970s London? And immediately I was like, yeah, I'm in. The idea of Emma Stone, I, I, I absolutely adore. And then as Cruella, which is such a de delicious villain, uh, there's so much to work with there. Even though we have very little idea of her backstory and that setting is just right up my alley. I thought we could do so much with that. They, there's such, there's such formidable talents, the two of them. They're so, they're so um, masters of their craft. And we're dealing with a tone here with Tony's writing, Tony McNamara, that is very specific. And it's, it, it can be quite difficult uh, for an actor to do, but the, the both of them have such enormous range with their work and they can play that drama and that comedy beautifully and know where to lean into it and where to lean into the, into the uh, emotion. And it made my life very easy because they're, they're both so talented. And then it was just about sort of modulating their performance with each other so that, uh, you know, to get that, dy that, that the dynamic that was just so delightful when the two of them were on screen together. My choice of songs is that uh, you couldn't really uh, say that it's intellectual. It's much more of an emotional gut instinct for me. And sometimes it comes very quickly, like uh, the doors with the Baroness getting out of the car the first time or Nancy Sinatra um, on, on, on Corella at the Liberties. And then sometimes it can take a, a while to figure out what it is. It's like um, the opening song of the film was months before we could figure that out. And I knew it, there's always going to be a song there. We're trying to find something that had enough melody and ran long enough and had enough of that, both like optimism and, and uh, a little bit of sadness and rebellion in there. Uh, it was a little time before we landed on that super trap. It's funny. It's uh, yeah, absolutely daunting in the sense of like, can, I deliver a film that is that will totally work that fits into the Disney brand that is that that is uh, this wild exciting ride that you're engaged in and has a real character arc to it like that's the daunting part the actual physical production for me that would get worked out with such talented people and production heads and ultimately you know we'll get there but like story wise we have to make sure it works and that's the stressful part and you know again we have such talented actors I know if we can get the story right, they can deliver it. And uh, so the prep in, in some ways was the, the daunting part, getting the script worked out. I had such an incredible team that was uh, working on Corella. It's like, you know, firstly, we had Jenny Bevan, the, the undertaking that she took on. And, and she came on, you know, uh, with not that much time, I think she had about three months to prep this film and the enormity of it. I'm not sure if she's even done something quite at this scale before. It's like the amount of uh, gala events we'd have, like the Marie Antoinette event, 500 people, full costume, uh, black and white ball, 1970s style that she had to figure out because it's all period. It makes it much more complicated for finding wardrobe and costume. And uh, she... And then on top of that, she had to do a, a fashion line for both the Baroness and Corella. It was just enormous. And it, it all had to be impeccable. You know, it's like these are two characters in the fashion world and they would be scrutinized on the screen. And she absolutely killed it. And then uh, for the production designer, we had Fiona Crombie, who I uh, had met coming off of The Favourite. And she did such a beautiful job. It's like, I think uh, to really place this in that era and the textures and the detail of like, you know, of Notting Hill and King's Road and the, and the squatters of that time, like we put a lot of reference there and just recreating parts of London that didn't exist anymore with those empty lots um, and just the palette that she would choose and the, you know, 
and the the detail of the floral arrangements and and the layers of paint and the layer it's like it was just unbelievable and the craftsman that she has there in london to work with i think it was just impeccable and the scale of the sets you know the baroness's uh the baroness's uh house of the baroness where she works is a it's a beautiful set that was designed by fiona the the baroness hall is another massive set that she did that the detail of all the you know the floors with all the different tiles and the walls and and uh, you know the um the, the floral arrangements up the stairs it's like it was just endless with her again i can't imagine the amount of time it took i think she said there was something like a 132 sets involved in the show um and then jenny so then we have nadia stacy who absolutely killed it with corella and took it to a place that that i i couldn't have dreamed of it's like you know obviously we knew we we're going to have all of these uh, uh hairstyles for her but when she saw how much was going on with like you know with wardrobe i think she very quickly realized the opportunity that corella being in fashion she part naturally she would be doing her hair differently all the time and just the amount of different hairstyles that she had that were like character based sometimes like you know with the bangs to make her softer looking or without to make her more elegant it's like they were all coming from really strong character places and she did such a beautiful job with the hair and the makeup You know, it's like, I, I think it's, I, I love the theme that's going on in the film with that you have to really embrace like your true self. And uh, it's something that she's uh, suppressed or being told to suppress from a very early age and, and goes against that and against your instincts, trying to please other people. And it's not until she really leans into her true self that she flourishes. And I love that, that message in, this, in the film. Thank you for watching. Head to sarahscoop.com for more of the scoop on your favorite things.